week 13 on its way Sunday. We had no Thursday game yesterday. So here's your tight end rankings, the top 15 heading into the week. The first guy is Travis Kelsey. Who else would it be of the Kansas City Chiefs? This guy, he puts up huge numbers each and every week. This Chief offense, they're hitting their stride. And this guy, he's a monster. You drafted him in the second or third round for a reason is Travis Kelsey. And he's going to do what he does, 15, 20 points each week this week versus a weak Denver Bronco defense. And he's just going to put numbers up and do his thing. So Travis Kelsey, he easily is number one at tight end this week and rest of the season. Number two, Darren Waller of the Oakland Raiders. Waller, he's been up and down the last few weeks. Well, I got him number two here. He's still a great tight end that most weeks he's going to put up top performances right behind Kelsey. And right now he's got a weak New York Jet team that him and the Raiders are going to New York this weekend. And Waller, I could see him have a huge ball game, 60 total yards and possibly two touchdowns in this ball game. The Jets, they're stop no, stopping no one. They're giving up tons of points to offenses and tight ends score the fourth most fantasy points versus this Jet defense. I think Darren Waller, like I said, he could have a big ball game and he's easily the number two option this week at tight end. Number three, TJ Hawkinson of the Detroit Lions. He's been a consistent tight end. I've been saying it all season long. And once again, last week, he had 90 yards with Hawkinson on Thanksgiving Day. I thought he was going to have a bigger game with the start he had. I think he had like 40 yards to start off the ball game the first drive. And this week, he's got a middle of the pack matchup versus Chicago. But Hawkinson, he's matchup proof in my opinion. He scores good points. He gets double digits only twice in PPR fantasy leagues this year. He hasn't scored double digit fantasy points. So he's a number three guy and an easy guy to start here. Number four, Eric Ebron. People might think he's way up here in the rankings, but this guy, he's consistent as well. He's getting touchdowns and he's getting targets. And we saw him last week versus the Baltimore Ravens, a very tough defense. He had seven catches for 54 yards on 11 targets. So they're looking his way all their receivers played in that ball game for Baltimore in Juju Smith Schuster, Claypool, and Johnson. So Ebron, Ben's looking for him. He's getting open, and he's a matchup problem for most defenses. And this week, he versus a Washington team that they're decent on D, but I still have confidence here that Ebron can find the end zone where we scored double digit fantasy points this week. So he's the number four guy for me. Number five is Hunter Henry of the Los Angeles Chargers. It's been good to see Henry the last few weeks now find the end zone and get back into those double-digit fantasy days. And Henry this week, he's got a pretty decent matchup versus New England. New England, they're going to focus here in this ball game on stopping Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler in this game. And that's just going to open up the middle of the field, in my opinion, for Hunter Henry. And I could see him getting 70 or 80 total yards on five or six catches in this one and possibly finding the end zone. Henry, he's a matchup problem for most defenses. And when you got a good young quarterback like Justin Herbert, who spreads that rock around and he looks for everybody, Hunter Henry, it's a good place for him to be. And he's a guy that I think could have a top five performance easily this week. The sixth guy is Mark Andrews of the Baltimore Ravens. Andrews, he was out in that ball game versus the Pittsburgh Steelers in week 12 because he went on the COVID list, but he should be back here Tuesday. This ball game is versus Dallas. So another extended week here is week 13. Dallas, they can't stop no one. We saw Logan Thomas have a good fantasy game with 13 fantasy points in PPR leagues on Thanksgiving versus Dallas. So Andrews, he's going to be a matchup problem. He's going to be a guy that Lamar is going to try to rely on more as the weeks go on. And Andrews, finally, the last two weeks, he's bounced back before missing Week 12's ball game. So I think Andrews, he could have a huge ball game here. But we don't know for sure if he's going to come and play. And who knows how healthy he really is after getting the virus. But anyway, I got him at six. And he's a guy I could trust this week and for most of the season the rest of the way. The seventh guy is John o. Smith of the Tennessee Titans. I had him ninth ranked rest of the season at tight end, so go check that video out. But this week in week 13, I got him ranked here seventh is Smith. He's got a great matchup versus the Cleveland Browns, who give up the second most fantasy points to tight ends. And Smith, I know he's been touchdown dependent. 
I know he's the fourth or fifth option in this Titan offense, but this week I think Smith's going to bounce back after coming off the bad goose egg only on two targets. I know he missed some practice time, but hopefully he could play in this game. So if he does, he's number seven for me. And if you don't Anthony Ferska, he's going to be a good pickup and a good play if Smith don't play. Number eight, Dallas Goddard of the Philadelphia Eagles. He had two huge ball games now. The last two games in a row is Goddard, and this week he's got a good matchup versus Green Bay, and this is a ball game where we're going to see them throw a lot, but he's not that high on my rankings because Zach Ertz, he's clear to play, and he's coming back. And Ertz, I know they don't want to pay him and stuff, but this guy, he gives them a chance to win. They're still in the race here in the NFC East, so Zach Ertz, he's going to get playing time. He's going to eat into some of the snaps and targets, I believe, too. Goddard, he'll still be out there. 80 85 percent of the time but like i said Ertz, he's a guy i think is going to find the, the open ways in this defense so that's why i got goddard at eight the ninth tight ends robert tanyan of the green bay packers it's been nice to see tanyan find the end zone now in his last two ball games and this week he's got a good matchup versus this philly team and philly teams they're moving the ball pretty well tanyan i could see him getting 50 or 60 yards in this ball game and possibly finding the end zone. So I think Tanya, I wouldn't be surprised if he could get 12 to 15 points. The next guy is Trey Burton of the Indianapolis Colts. And Burton, he's been a big pickup this week. He's still available, though, after the wave has ended today in about 75% of fantasy leagues. But he's a Phillip River favorite. He's been getting open. He's been working the middle of the field, this Burton. And he's a big red zone target. This guy, it seems like almost every week he scores a touchdown for this Colt team. And like I say, he's getting the targets in the red zone. Total targets a game, they haven't been that much. But he's doing the job. And he's a guy that I have in the top 15 for the rest of the season at the tight end position. So check that video out if you hadn't. But Burton this week at Houston, it's a good matchup. I think he's going to get open, and I think he finds the end zone in this one. And I could expect 30 or 40 yards with that touchdown. The next guy, number 11, Logan Thomas of the Washington football team. Thomas, they've been using him in many ways now the last few weeks. The former quarterback, now tight end for the Washington football team. And Thomas, he's a solid player. He's had a pretty decent year. This week, though, I know it's a very tough matchup in Pittsburgh, who gives up the least amount of fantasy points to tight ends but this ball game I could see it getting out of hand where Alex Smith and this Washington team's gonna have to throw the ball 35 40 times and I could see Thomas in garbage time pile up some yards and possibly find the end zone so yes the matchup isn't that good but I think the volume is gonna be there in this ball game for Logan Thomas so he's number 11 number 12 Evan Ingram of the New York Giants he's been pretty solid most of the season but now with it confirmed Daniel Jones out this week in week 13 in Seattle. I don't know if Colt McCoy is going to get the ball to Ingram a lot like Daniel Jones did. The Giants, I could see him playing very conservative in this ball game and running the football a lot where they're not going to have McCoy try to throw the ball 40 or 50 times. But if the game does get out of hand, that might be the case. But they're going to try to run heavy. And I just don't see Ingram getting open, especially if Bobby Wagner is going to trail most of the game. He's one of the better linebackers, or the best linebacker, I should say, in all of pro football. So it's a bad matchup. He don't have his quarterback this week. And Ingram, he's a guy I could see totally have a bad ball game with only a few fantasy points, five to eight points, and that's not getting the job done. Number 13, Noah Fanta, the Denver Broncos. Font, he's been injured up and down most of the season and now with quarterback troubles even though Drew Locke should come back in this ball game for the Denver Broncos it's a tough matchup versus Kansas City that they don't give tight ends many points they're playing a little better now last week versus Tampa we saw them lock them up until the end of that ball game where they just played like a prevent defense and Tampa just kept throwing the ball up and down the field but anyway Noah Font like I said he's been injured the stats haven't been there. He hasn't had a double-digit fantasy game in four or five weeks now is Noah Fine. And this week versus Kansas City, I could see more of the same. I know the defense, they're probably going to go worry about Font and Judy. Those are the two guys they're going to try to stop. And I think they're going to dare 
Denver to run the football like they did in their first matchup and have Melvin Gordon and Lindsey, if Lindsey's playing, try to beat him on the ground. So I just don't like the matchup. He's a guy I had on my bench list video as well as Font, but if you have no other options, you play him. So he's number 13. Number 14, Hayden Hurst of the Atlanta Falcons. Hurst here with another matchup this week versus the New Orleans Saints. And Hurst, he's been up and down at tight end this year. But this week, I don't know if he's going to do that great. We'll see the status on Julio Jones if he's going to play or not. Because if Julio plays, that's some targets away from Hurst. But it also opens up the middle of the field. So I feel like Hurst, sometimes his performance relies on if Julio's in the lineup or not. So we're going to see how that goes. But a few weeks ago versus New Orleans, he had the old goose egg was Hayden Hurst. And this week again, this New Orleans team, they've been playing good. They're better as the weeks go on at defense, and they're going to try to control the clock, and they give up the third least amount of fantasy points to tight end. So I just don't like it this week for Hurst. So he's at number 14 for me, and the 15th and final guys, Mike Gesicki of the Miami Dolphins. It was good to see him find the end zone last week with the Jets. But once again, his status is pending on if Ryan Fitzpatrick's going to start this ball game. And this thing they're saying in Miami, he most likely is, but we're not going to get an announcement till Saturday, which is tomorrow. So it's a wait-and-see approach. If Fitzpatrick's in the lineup, Gusecki's a guy I said I would start this week because of the great matchup versus Cincinnati. If not, he's a guy i probably put on the wire and find another option. But Gusecki, I could see him getting 20, 30 yards and a touchdown in this ball game if Ryan Fitzpatrick starts. So that's a top 15 tight ends ranked here for week 13.